Christmas to you all. Welcome to Cornerstone Faith Community Church. We are very excited to be gathered together with you on this very special night, the night that remembers the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This evening, we will hear from God's Word about His plan to redeem and to restore His people to redeem and restore them to right relationship with him and with each other. We will sing the Christmas carols, the Christmas hymns of our faith, and we will rejoice in Christ the Lord, the newborn King. You know, skeptics have often criticized having church on Christmas Eve, saying that it makes no sense to pretend as if Jesus has not yet been born some 2,022 years ago. And when we come together in these Christmas Eve services, they would suggest that we are just reenacting that birth. Let me assure you of this one thing tonight, brothers and sisters. There is nothing pretend about what we are doing here tonight. And there is nothing pretend about what we expect God to do in this place tonight. He is indeed here with us. He is God with us. He is Emmanuel. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He has come to set his people free. Yes, Jesus was born. He lived. He died. And it is time for us to remember that over and over and over again. It is time for us to remember that to us, a child has been born. To us, a son has been been given. And his name is Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus. So brothers and sisters, come now from the busyness and the chaos of this season in this world. Come to the manger and come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is the great God, and we are the people of His pasture, the sheep Wawa. under His care. Wawa. Would you please stand and sing together with us tonight?
This evening our order of worship follows uh, traditional lessons in carols style of service, um, but it is a bit of a departure from what you may have experienced in the past, beginning with the book of Genesis and working our way through the entire scripture. I went back and tried as best I could to discern what would have been done in this place um, 50, 70 years ago. And I came across this order of service uh, from a service manual from 1940. And I thought that you may enjoy hearing the story of Christ's birth as told by the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Micah. So we begin with lesson one, Isaiah chapter seven, verses one through 17. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah. King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim, so the hearts of his Ahaz and his people were shaken, as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out, you, your sons, your son share Jeshub, Meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the longer's field. Say to him, be careful, keep calm, and do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because of those two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and the son of Ramalia. Aram, Ephraim, and Ramalia's sons have plotted your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart, let us divide it among ourselves, and make the son of Tabeel king over it. Yet, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It will not take place, and it will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only resin. Within sixty-five years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Ramalia's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. And again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, asked the Lord your God for a sign, whether the deepest depths or the highest of heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, it is, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you also try the patience of my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive. And she shall give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. And he will bring the king of Assyria. Let's sing together.
chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Marshal your troops, Gam, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. The rest of his brothers will return to join the Israelites. And that he will stand. And he will shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let's sing together. Just bear 
Our fourth lesson is taken from the prophet Isaiah chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his shoot, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of holiness and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with the righteous he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. That the wolf will lie with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat, and the calf, and the lion, and the yearling together, and the little child will leave them. <coughs> the cow will feed with the bear, the young will lie down together, the lion will eat straw like the ox, the infant will play near the cobra's den, the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. Then they will neither harm nor destroy all on my holy mountain. For the Lord will be filled with the knowledge, for the world will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. For in that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, the nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Let's sing together. <laughs> And so a voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? 
For all people are like grass, and all of their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. So you who bring good news to Zion, go up to a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voices with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. For see, the sovereign Lord comes with power. He rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. For he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms, and he carries them close to his heart, and he gently leads those that have young. Let's sing together. <laughs> Greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive, and you will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. For he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so a holy one to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child. In her old age, she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from the Lord God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Let's sing to you. Sign to you. 
You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Let's sing together. <laughs>
tonight where we will light our candles. And as we prepare to light our candles, I uh, wanted to share with you, uh, I heard a pastor earlier today talking about why we even light candles in the first place. And of course, it goes back centuries, right, where to gather on Christmas Eve at midnight without electricity or gas, any other kind of lighting, how could you read the words in the hymnal? How could you see one another's faces if you didn't have candles? And so there's often stories that have been told about 300, 400 years ago when candle services were happening and the entire service happened by candlelight. And can you imagine holding an infant or a small child and a candle all evening throughout maybe an hour, hour and a half long mass? Certainly that's not our situation tonight. We have lights. So why do we light the candles? This pastor that I was listening to said, well, imagine someone driving by your church tonight. Imagine as they drive by going one direction, they see that the it's dimly lit. There's lots of cars in the parking lot, but uh, there's not much light in the sanctuary. And then imagine you get to the candle line, and that same person drives by your church again, and the church is illuminated with light. What more beautiful, what more perfect and, and honoring way to show Jesus Christ is the light of the world to our world. And so as we light our candles tonight, I would ask you to focus on that. Remember that Christ is born. Christ isn't born in some manger 2,000 years ago. Christ is born in your heart tonight. He is yours. Yes, even yours, Blair. <laughs> he is yours. And he so desperately wants you to open the gift of his grace tonight. You see, God sent him as our gift, the greatest gift we could ever receive that he would be faithful to death for you. So I offer you now the candle, the light, and the greatest gift that I can offer to you, the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world.
Lord's blessing taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And in Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Let's sing to you.
through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to be yours this day and forevermore. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God from